Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I am host for this session. Uh, myself, uh, Anuj Abraham, a senior researcher in uh, Artificial Intelligence and uh, Rotational Science Research Center, AIDRC at uh, TII, Abu Dhabi UAE. On behalf of uh, AIDRC team, I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Professor Armugam Nalanathan, and all other researchers who have uh, registered to attend this seminar series. Firstly, I will introduce uh, the speaker and topic of this presentation. Armugam Nalanathan is a professor of wireless communication and the founded, founding head of the uh, Communication System Research CSR group in the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science at Kunz Mary University of London since September 2017. He was with the Department of Informatics at King's College London uh, from 2007 to 2017 where he was a professor of wireless communication uh, from April 2013 to 2017. He was an assistant professor in uh, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, National University of Singapore, NUS, from 2000 to 2007. His research interest includes uh, 6G wireless networks, the Internet of Things, the molecular communication. He, was, he has published more than 500 technical papers in scientific journals and international conferences. He is also a co-recipient of the uh, Best Paper Awards presented at the IEEE uh, reputed conferences like ICC, Globcom, VTC, etc. He is also a co-recipient of the uh, IEEE Communication Society, Leonard G. Abraham Prize in uh, 2022. We are so pleased that uh, you have uh, accepted our invitation and agreed to speak at our uh, telecom seminar series. Today, okay. today Professor Aramugam Nalanathan will be delivering a talk on uh, topic uh, Massive Ultra Reliable Low Latency Connectivity, Massive URLLC in 6G. This topic is an emerging as a new and important service class in the uh, next generation 6G for the uh, time incentive uh, sensitive traffic and has recently received tremendous research attention who considers uh, the latency, reliability, and uh, massive access requirements. He will also try to cover the applicability of uh, machine learning approaches in uh, massive URLLC systems. It is our pleasure to have Professor uh, as our esteemed speaker for this talk. Hope this presentation will give a significant research insights to all the attendees. Uh, so let us uh, all welcome Professor for his presentation and the floor is your folks. Okay, thanks Anuj for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this uh, talk is about a uh, new use case uh, in 6G. That is a massive ultra reliable low latency communication. This is a new use case um, proposed in uh, 6G. If you take the 5G ultra reliable low latency communication use cases, so we can find the end-to-end -end latency requirements from 0.5 millisecond to some 50 millisecond. Say, for example, the lowest is uh, tactile internet uh, uh, 0.5 millisecond. Oh, one second. So the say the uh, so discrete automation one millisecond. In some cases process automation and other things are 50 milliseconds. So different uh, latency, end-to-end -end latency requirements. But if you take the reliability, so everywhere almost 99.99 percentage. .99%. So here we are going to have very high reliability. The latency requirement sometimes is going to be 0.5 millisecond or one millisecond requirements. So if you take the, the, the general requirement in uh, 3GPP technical report. So the control plane latency, 10 millisecond, user plane latency, 0.5 millisecond. Then the reliability is going to be uh, 10 to the power minus five bit error probability with the uh, uh, 32 bytes in uh, user plane with latency of one millisecond. So these are the general requirement of uh, 5G ultra reliable low latency communications in uh, 3GPP technical report. If you take the 6G use cases, so the use cases similar to 5G use cases, so everything is going to be strengthened. Say enhanced mobile broadband, 
broadband is going to be strengthened in enhanced mobile broadband, strengthened massive, um, uh, machine type of communications, strengthened ultra reliable low latency communications. So in addition to these three uh, strengthened pillars, we are going to have some other use cases. So one of the use cases is the massive ultra reliable low latency communications. If you take the 5G, so massive connectivity is the massive IoT. Then ultra reliable low latency communication is the critical IoT. So here a new use case that is going to be a combination of massive IoT and critical IoT. So that is massive ultra reliable low latency communications. So if you combine these two together, so the requirement is going to be three requirements because when you have ultra reliable low latency communication, only two requirements, ultra the, the reliability and latency. When you take the massive connectivity, we have one requirement. So the, the number of devices within one square kilometer. So when you have 6G, everything extreme, extreme data rate, extreme coverage, extreme uh, the low energy consumption, extreme latency, extreme reliability, extreme massive connectivity. So now the, we are going to see the challenges. So when we have this new use case of massive ultra reliable low latency communications, so we, we are going to have massive connectivity. So extreme high reliability, extreme low latency. So how we are going to achieve these three challenges? So the way the devices access the wireless channel, not suitable for this uh, special use case of massive ultra reliable low latency communications in 6G. Because, so if you have the scheduling request, so we cannot meet the latency constraint. So here we are going to have huge number of devices. So we are going to have frequent collision. So we may not be able to achieve the high reliability. Then we have, we have the limited number of preambles. So the user equipment will have to select one of the preamble to send to the base station to establish the connections. So here we have massive number of devices, but the number of preambles are limited. Another one as usual, so we have uh, spectrum scarcity because of the license spectrum. So these are the limitations. So in this uh, wireless channel access, what are the potential solutions? Okay, one solution. So the instead of grant based, so remove the the scheduling request. So that is grant free. So this is one potential solution. So by having grant free we can reduce the latency. For example, if you take the grant based one, so the user equipment is going to wait for the uplink control channel five millisecond. Then send the scheduling request take one millisecond. Then base station decoding and generate the scheduling grant three millisecond. So similarly, the other time taken for scheduling grant decode scheduling grant, send the data, decode the data, everything. So if you take here, so we end up with nearly 15 milliseconds. That is in the grant based. So that is the user equipment to establish the connection, the scheduling uh, request and everything, it takes uh, more than 10 milliseconds. So if you take the grant free, so we can reduce the latency because the user equipment does not need the handshaking process before the actual data transmission. So, so that is the that is the main reason to have the grant free to reduce the latency. So, this is one potential solution. So, what would be the second solution? So, here we need reliability. So, because ultra reliable. So, to have the reliability. So the recommended schemes are the repetition scheme and proactive scheme. So what is meant by repetitive scheme? So we are going to send the same packet. So that is we are going to repeat the packet certain number of times. 
For example, the user equipment is going to repeat the same packet four times. So send to the base station. So at the end of the last repetition, fourth repetition, the base station informed to the user equipment whether uh, succeeded or not. So now the question is, so, so by repeating, we can improve the reliability because if the transmission is successful one of the repetition time, then it is considered as transmitted, successfully transmitted. But the problem is when we repeat the uh, same packet more times, we are going to waste the resources, we are going to increase the latency. To improve the reliability, at the same time, we are going to increase the latency. So, so that is the, the bottleneck here. So that is when we increase the repetition, we can improve the reliability, but we are going to waste the resources. That's what another scheme proposed. That is proactive scheme. So the proactive scheme means, so here the certain number of repetition, but not like the previous case, previous case acknowledgement, whether succeeded or not, at the end of the, after the last repetition decoded. But here, acknowledgement after each repetition. So succeeded or not after each. So by that way, we are going to the, uh, have the, uh, the, the one advantage. So that is, say for example, we don't need to wait till the last repetition. For example, if the second repetition, repetition is successful, then we can terminate. No need the remaining repetition. So by this way, so we can reduce the number of repetition. But the problem is here, the, uh, uh, we are going to send the acknowledgement whether succeeded or not every uh, repetition. So by that way, so it is going to be more computationally heavy uh, for the user equipment. So advantage, so we can save the resources, reduce the latency, but disadvantage, we are going to have computationally expensive because after each packet is going to send the uh, acknowledgement. So that, are, that is a difference between care repetition scheme and proactive scheme to improve the reliability. Uh, but here, the, definitely the latency will increase because when we repeat again and again, but proactive scheme, it can reduce the latency as much as possible because it is going to terminate once one repetition is successful, no need the remaining repetition. The third potential solution here, we are going to have massive connectivity. So when we have huge number of uh, devices are going to be connected, so we have limited physical resource blocks. So, so therefore, we don't have infinite physical resource block. So we have limited physical resource block. So therefore, whether the, the two users can use the same physical resource block at the same time. So to do that one, we have to remove the orthogonality. So therefore, we are going to have a combination of grant free and uh, non orthogonal multiple access scheme together with a uh, repetition or proactive scheme to meet all these three requirements. So if you take the, uh, the if you remove the orthogonality, so same resource blocks are going to be selected by more than one user equipment. So collision will occur. So now, so when we have this, uh, the, the, these three potential solutions. So one is uh, ground free to reduce the latency. So the repetition scheme or proactive scheme to improve the reliability, to increase the connectivity number of additional, uh, to increase the massive connect, uh, the, to have the massive connectivity, we are going to use the same physical resource block by more than one user equipment. So therefore, to meet these three requirements, so signature grant free NOMA is a uh, potential candidate for massive ultra reliable low latency communication. So, the another thing is multiple configuration grant. 
So multiple configuration grant means in the 3GPP release 16, so they proposed multiple configuration grant. So multiple configuration grant means here we are going to have different configurations with different starting offsets. Say, if you, if you have only single configuration grant, if a packet arrive in a user equipment, if a packet arrive in the middle of a subframe, it will have to wait till the beginning of next subframe to transmit. But in multiple configuration grant, the user equipment does not need to wait till the beginning of the next subframe. It can transmit as and when the packet arrive by selecting proper configuration grant. Because here we are going to have multiple configuration grant with different starting offset. By that way, we can reduce the latency further. So here, the one particular user equipment so can have multiple configuration grant. At the same time, one particular configuration grant could be shared by multiple user equipments. So at the same time, this multiple configuration grant so is used for to different traffic types also, it can be used. So by this way, we can reduce the queuing latency. Because say if you have the one subframe of, for example, one millisecond, so in the middle of the subframe, say middle means say for example, after 0.5 millisecond, if a packet arrive, it will have to wait till the beginning of next subframe. So that means the delay 0.5 millisecond. So we can reduce that by 0.5 millisecond. So for example, just after the, uh, the first subframe, if the packet arrive, we can we we'll have to wait one millisecond till the beginning of the next subframe. So by having multiple configuration grant, so the user equipment does not need to wait till the beginning of next subframe. So by that way, approximately, it can reduce the latency of one millisecond. So another advantage is, say, so if we wait to transmit for the next, the, the starting of next subframe, many other user equipments will wait to start in the second subframe. So collision will occur. So by having this multiple configuration grant, we can reduce the collision because the user equipment is going to select suitable configuration grant and transmit. If it is, if, if, if there's only single configuration grant, all user equipment will wait, build the, wait till the beginning of the next subframe. So collision, more collision will occur. So that's what in 3GPP release 16, multiple configuration grant has been proposed to reduce the latency further. Now we are going to have the, uh, the multiple access resources. So we know the, the one physical resource block of 180 kilohertz and one millisecond. So in, for, the, for the multiple access physical resource block, we are going to have third dimension in addition to the time and frequency uh, dimension we are going to have another dimension that is the signature sequence. So that signature sequence, third dimension, so that is for uh, user equipment activity detection and for the robust data transmission, one signature sequence. So we are going to have, in addition to a physical resource block, we have the third domain of the signature sequence. So by, so having that, we are going to have contention transmission unit. So we are going to have number of contention transmission unit. One contention transmission unit is like one physical resource block of 180 uh, kilohertz, one millisecond, and uh, the uh, one specific signature sequence. So when we have this CTUs, contention transmission unit, so when you take uplink grant free, uh, transmission. So we are going to have the number of stages. So in the user equipment, when the packet arrive, so the base station is going to broadcast the uh, resource configuration parameters. So once it broadcasts the resource configuration parameters, 
So then we are going to have several check. For a third one is the latency check. So here we have latency constraint. For, for example, if the latency constraint if you set to one millisecond or two millisecond, so if it does not meet the latency constraint, we assume that so the packet drop fail. So latency constraint should be met. If it meets the latency constraint, then we have to see whether the collision occurred. So if the CTU collided, so, so that means uh, that we will have to retransmit the CTU uh, again. So if you retransmit the CTU again, so then it, it may not meet the latency constraint. So, so that means the, the, it should not collide it. It should meet the latency constraint. If everything succeeded only, then the successive interference cancellation decoding, and finally the acknowledgement, so we can consider it as succeeded. So here we have to maintain the latency constraint, collision means reliability constraint, all these constraints should be met before the data decoding. Say for example, say we take one physical resource block, two physical resource block, resource block one and resource block two. So we have three signature sequence. With the resource block one, when we have three signature sequence, we have contention transmission unit, CTU1, CTU2, CTU3. Say so take the second physical resource block. With that one, when we have three signature sequence, so we will end up with another three CTUs. So here we are going to have a pool of six CTUs. From this pool of six CTUs, user equipment is going to pick up one CTU randomly. So say for example, if you take CTU2, so it's uh, selected by two user equipment. So therefore we are going to have collision. So CTU2, so is selected by two. Similarly CTU1, so that is collision CTU. If you take user equipment one, it select CTU6, so no collision. Say if you take CTU3, it is idle. So none of the user equipment selected CTU3. So they have limited number of CTUs, because the, the spectrum resources are expensive. So we cannot have infinite number of CTUs because the, we cannot have infinite number of physical resource blocks. So we have limited spectrum. So we have limited number of CTUs or we have to limit the optimum number of CTUs for a particular situation, particular uh, environment or particular type. So now, so th there are three potential solutions. So that is grant free to reduce the latency. So repetition scheme or project is scheme to improve the reliability. Then remove the orthogonality for massive connectivity. Still, we have numerous challenges. One is the base station. Uh, so it does not know the set of active users, the channel conditions, all are unknown to the base station. Because here we have huge number of devices. So then we have to meet the reliability latency constraint simultaneously under random traffic. So here we have to have the collision detection. So if you take the general, the, com the communication environment here, it is very complex. So we, it's, it's, we don't have the tractable mathematical formulation. If you don't have the tractable mathematical formulation, so we can't use the uh, the conventional optimization methods because so complex communication environment we don't have the tractable mathematical formulations so we may not be able to use the conventional convex optimization scheme so what would be the solution so whenever we have models deficit or algorithm deficit so we can use the learning experience so by using the the learning experience so we can have the we can change the parameters dynamically by changing the parameters dynamically we will be able to achieve the target so if you take the conventional solutions is that they are model based theoretical approach so they consider short term key performance index 
But machine learning one, based on the learning experience, it considered for the long-term key performance index. So when we have multiple parameters, so multiple agents for each parameter, they are going to cooperatively optimize. So here, so that is the reason here we are going to use the deep reinforcement learning for this massive ultra reliable low latency communication problem. So grant free NOMA with repetition scheme. Okay, so now when we take uh, the, the deep reinforcement learning, we have three com components. So one is observation, other one action. So such that to maximize the reward. So first we see what are the observations that we are going to have? What are the actions we are going to take to maximize the reward, uh, maximize the objective? So to maximize the objective, so if the correct actions are taken, then the reward will be given. So here when we take the observations, so, so during the previous transmission time interval, so we have transmission time interval, say so at the beginning of the a particular transmission time interval. So we have the observations. So about the previous transmission time interval. So during the previous transmission time interval, how many CPUs collided? How many CPUs not utilized idle? How many CPUs were selected by only by single user equipment? So the, there are three cases. So idle CPU, singleton CPU, collision CPU different types of CPUs we are going to observe. Then we are going to observe, so number of user equipments have been successfully detected and decoded with latency constraint. Other observation is number of user equipments, they successfully detected, but not decoded. So two cases, so, so detected and decoded, other one detected, but not decoded. So these are the observations that we are going to have uh, during the previous transmission time interval. Based on these observations, we are going to have number of agents to take the action. Action means change the parameters such that the common objective could be achieved. So here, the agents we are going to have two agents we are going to have. So one agent is going to change the repetition value because for example, if we have the K repetition scheme, so the K should be dynamically changed at the each transmission time interval, few hundred millisecond interval. So the repetition value dynamically changed because we cannot have the static value for K. Similarly, number of CTUs depends on the traffic conditions, so should be changed. If the traffic is light, then we don't need uh, more CTUs and we cannot waste the resources. So if the traffic is very high, we have to increase the number of CTUs. So therefore, here we are going to have two agents. Two agents select the two parameters at the beginning of the transmission time interval based on the observation during the previous transmission time interval. Here objective goal is to maximize the long-term reward. Long-term reward is to maximize the number of successfully served devices under latency constraint and reliability constraint. So here, so we use the, uh, the double uh, deep Q learning. So two agents. So one agent to dynamically change the uh, repetition value. Other agent is going to change the, uh, the number of CTUs needed. So we have two agents. So they are based on the Q-learning algorithm. So here we use to have the stability. We have the double deep Q-learning. So one is the target Q network, other one is the uh, estimated Q network. So we are going to minimize the loss function. So here the primary Q network is going to explore and exploitation. So that is, so exploit means, so it is going to take the action based on which 
action gives high Q value. Other one, exploration, say 10 percentage of time. Uh, so it takes random action. So by that way, it explored. So now the traffic scenario that what we are going to consider. So the different types of devices we have. So some traffic are the uh, general traffic. Some traffic as bursty traffic. For example, if you take utility meet, uh, meters, water meter or electricity meter or gas meter, so they are general traffic. But if you take uh, pay as you drive, so it is going to be bursted traffic. Pay as you drive means, so you pay the insurance for your vehicle only when you drive. So when you park your vehicle, you don't need to pay the insurance. So that means the vehicle, when you start to drive, it will have to establish the connection with the base station through the base station to the insurance service provider. Then insurance service provider should approve to drive the vehicle in the road. Say for example, if you have one big event, one big football match, at the end of the match, there will be 10,000, 20,000 cars will leave from the stadium. So all these 10,000 uh, vehicles, cars, will have to establish the connection with the insurance service provider through the base station. So all these 10,000 uh, sensors will select a limited number of preempts. So collision will occur. So only 10%, 20% will succeed to establish the connection. So the others will have to wait. So that is the bursty traffic. So in uh, 3GPP report, technical report, the recommended, uh, the, the suggested traffic model to model the bursty traffic is time limited beta distribution. In the time limited beta distribution, so there are two parameters, alpha, beta. Say here, we have the uh, high traffic, low traffic. So the solid lines, high traffic, high traffic, uh, bursty traffic. So during certain time period, certain transmission time interval, so the number of active users huge during that certain tens of milliseconds. So then low, another one is bursty traffic, low bursty traffic. So the number of active bursty during that interval, but it's low. So different values of alpha, beta, we can model the bursty traffic. So once you model the bursty traffic arrival, so we can have so this uh, machine learning base. So we have two agents. So one agent is going to select the number of CTUs at the beginning of the transmission time interval. So that agent is going to select one of the four. So either 12 CTU, the agent can select either 12 CTU or 24 CTU, 36 CTU, 48. So one of these four CTU number selected by one agent at the beginning of the transmission time interval. Then the repetition value, the second agent is going to select the repetition depends on the channel conditions. So if the channel is poor, the agent will select the repetition value of high value eight. Other than say if the channel is very good, so, so it will, low traffic, it can select repetition one. So repetition one, two, four, six, eight. So second agent is going to select one of these repetition value. So here we have the latency constraints, say two milliseconds. So the transmission time interval, so, so one TTI, 0 0.125 milliseconds. So then we have other parameters, path loss exponent. And here we consider a scenario, base station located at the center of a circle of radius uh, uh, 10 kilometer. So here the uh, uh, DQ neural network. So here we consider three hidden layers, uh, each layer with uh, 128 uh, rectifier linear units. So here we have done the, the the numerical results for 1,000 episodes. So the other parameters, so learning rate, 
then uh, the exploration rate, all our standard values. So here we see we see the we compared the K repetition scheme with proactive scheme. So here proactive scheme performs better than repetition scheme, 1.5 times better. Why it is better? Because as I mentioned earlier, proactive scheme, so as and when one repetition succeeded, it terminates. But K repetition scheme terminate at the end of the last repetition decoding. <laughs> because of that, so that we have latency constraint two milliseconds. So the K repetition scheme will not meet the Repeat the latency constraint, so we get the is assume the packet loss. So that is the reason proactive scheme performs better. Say here, when you take the two agents, so one agent, top agent, uh, how the agent dynamically changes the repetition value at the beginning of each transmission interval. The second agent change the number of CTUs. So at the beginning, so if you see the conventional load estimation based uplink resource configuration with a uh, fixed value of repetition. So that is the green and blue, they are fixed value. But when you take, when we use these two agents, say we can see for the proactive scheme, so the, it, it adopts a stable repetition value or the CTU number that is lower than lower than the conventional load estimation approach. So by that way, so it can save the number of CTUs. So repetition value is lower than the conventional scheme. So it meets the latency constraint. But when you take the K repetition scheme, so it dynamically changing the value. So that means during the bursty period, bursty uh, traffic scenario, so, because of too many devices try to establish the connection, it reduces the K repetition value in the middle. So, when the light traffic, it increases the repetition value. Now, we are going to move to reduce the latency further. To reduce the latency further, we are going to have the multiple configuration grant. Say, if you take the 5G new radio frame structure, Say now, say one frame, 10 millisecond, one subframe, one millisecond. So here in uh, 5G new radio numerology, so we have different subcarrier spacing. For example, if the subcarrier spacing is 60 kilohertz, so within one millisecond, we are going to have eight slots. So each slot 0.125 millisecond. So within each slot, we are going to have seven OFDM symbol. So here slot based configurations. So that is, if you have single configuration grant, if a packet arrive during the interval of slot zero, it will have to wait, uh, seven slots, it will have to wait till the beginning of next subframe. So, but in the multiple configuration grant, we have different offset. Say for example, if a, in a user equipment, if a packet arrive in slot zero, the, it will select the configuration where the starting starts from slot one. Say if the packet arrives in the middle of slot three, it will select the configuration. So which start offset start from slot four. Say here, for example, we have different configuration. Say three parameters we are going to have. Repetition value, uh, the starting offset, number of CTU. So first configuration grant, it has repetition four, uh, the, the offset zero, number of CTU, two CTU. This is just an example. If you take the configuration grant four, here we have repetition uh, one, so two CTU. So offset is going to be a third slot. So here, so the, we don't need to wait till the beginning of next suffering because one user equipment can select the appropriate configuration grant and transmit. So here, 
not like a single configuration grant. Here we are going to have one more parameter. The parameter is for a particular user equipment, which uh, the starting uh, slot, or, so uh, the, which offset or which configuration grant is best. So the, the offset is going to be the one by one more parameter. So similar to earlier, but here we have one more agent. So, so that is earlier, we had actually two agents. One agent, so number of CTU. Other agent, number of repetition. Now, third agent we are going to have, so, so the starting slot. So within one millisecond, we have eight slots, each slot 0.125 millisecond. So which, one, which slot is the best to start once the packet arrives? So it will have to select the best configuration to transfer without waiting till the beginning of next subframe. Again, the goal, same goal. So that is we are going to maximize the long-term reward. So that is we are going to maximize the number of successfully served user equipment with latency constraint, con resource constraint, the uh, reliability constraint with all these constraints. So here, the third agent, so here, number of CTU, one agent is going to select uh, 8, 16, so one of the seven uh, value. So, so the, the, that agent select one of this number. So it depends on the observation during the previous interval. If the collision is very high, so that means heavy traffic. So in the beginning of next transmission time interval, it will select 56. So previous time interval observation number of collisions very low. So that means light traffic, it will select eight. So in medium, it can select 24 or 32. So repetition value like earlier is going to be one, two, uh, four, six, eight. So five, one of the five repetition value. So here is the third agent is going to have the starting slot. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So one of the five values it is going to select. So the, the here, similar to earlier, the base station is located and the user equipment distributed within 10 kilometer radius. So the, the deep unit uh, neural network, three hidden layers, each with 128 rectifier units. So the hyperparameters similar to earlier. So we did thousand episode. Now we consider uh, the bursty traffic, low traffic, and the heavy traffic. Earlier I mentioned here how we can model the low traffic dotted line. Heavy traffic is the solid line. So first we consider the uh, the low traffic bursty scenario. Bursty uh, low traffic. So when we take the the, the 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 parameters three four so that is not uh, highly bursty so single configuration grant multiple configuration grant performance is almost same so we need multiple configuration grant when it is too bursty then we have parameters 30 40 so here the uh, single configuration grant totally failed during the uh, bursty traffic interval now we consider high traffic scenarios. When you take high traffic scenario, bursty traffic, high traffic. So single configuration grant fails for the parameters three, four, or six, eight. So whatever parameters under high traffic, high traffic, high tra high bursty traffic scenario, completely fail. So multiple configuration grant performs better. So whatever the parameters alpha beta under heavy traffic high traffic scenario so that's what that is the one of the advantage of multiple configuration grant so that's what it was recommended in 3gpp release 16 now we consider the latest so when we have multiple configuration grant we don't need to wait till the beginning of next subframe so because of that so Compared to single configuration grant, latency is 
above 1.5 millisecond. But when we have multiple configuration grant, so we have the latency less than one millisecond, average latency. So now we have the both parameters, number of successfully served users under burst traffic scenario with the different number of multiple configuration grant, multiple configuration grant two, three, four, five. So when you have more multiple configuration grant five, when you have five, we can achieve both objective. The red line, both objective is, we can serve maximum number of users successfully during the um, bursty high traffic scenario while maintaining the latency less than 0.8 milliseconds. So that means we achieve both objectives. So the number of successfully served users as well as reduce the latency below one millisecond by having uh, the number of multiple configuration grant five. So here, so considering different background, I haven't included the mathematical derivation or anything. I just explained the concept. Those who are working exactly in this area, so I recommend the following references. So last year, GSEC and this year, TCOM papers. So full details of multiple configuration grant uh, the, the, and the uh, grant free NOMA. All the details are available, technical details in this uh, paper. So that is the end of my presentation. So we have 10 more minutes. Thank you, Professor, for uh, a nice presentation. So yeah. since uh, your topic is of, of what interest to all the researchers, we have uh, a numerous number of questions, but I'll try to restrict to uh, the time. So I, even okay. I also have some, a couple of questions. So I'll just start with mine. So okay. uh, uh, as you okay. said- uh, I, I check uh, some, some people send the, text message in the chat box. Okay, yeah. so they can find, I can first check it. I just want yeah. to ask how the machine learning based solutions deal with the uh, uh, massive connectivity and large network traffic. Will there be a security issue if grant free approach is um, adapted? Yeah, definitely there will be some security issue. Then uh, we haven't considered the security issues here. So we just consider only the uh, massive connectivity by having uh, contention transmission unit um, with, and removing the orthogonality, but we haven't considered the security issue. But when we have grant free, definitely we are going to have security issue because um, the because no scheduling, uh, no scheduling request with the base station, anyone can uh, transmit as and when the packet arrives. So definitely there will be a security issue. So that one we haven't considered here, um, but uh, I agree the security issue is an issue in the ground free. Then uh, automated guided vehicle, AGV used in smart factories be considered as uh, massive, um, uh, yeah, automate uh, in smart factories, um, uh, the uh, the automated guided vehicles can be considered as, uh, um, uh, but it, it may not be massive, uh, uh, but it can be considered as ultra reliable low latency devices. Mm, but uh, because the in a factory, it is not going to be in thousands of uh, AGVs. Mm -hmm. So so it comes under ultra reliable low latency communications. Uh, I doubt that it will come under massive. And another questions. Thank you. Uh, since you use multiple agents, what techniques were used in resolving conflicts, ensuring coordination of action from multiple agents, even if they share. Yeah, so the uh, the a agents, the the when we have two agents or three agents, they share information themselves such that they cooperatively achieve the common objective of maximizing the successfully served device. So they cooperate each other. So that means they share the information within themselves. Okay, then other one. 
So if they are able to adjust in real time manner, that's what uh, it seems to need. Yes. So first, it, it is to be trained offline. So if it is trained, because the the neural network based uh, the Q learning uh, the so the training must be done offline. So once it trained, it is online. Dynamically, it can change the parameter. So initially, the training must be done offline. I agree. Uh, if distribution environment changes, say parameters, uh, uh, if what if the distribution environment changes, say the parameters of beta. Yeah. Okay. Here we considered a fixed uh, uh, environment, the uh, alpha, beta. But in real situation, we are going to have the alpha, beta parameters dynamically changes. Uh, but if the agents are fully trained offline, I am sure they will adapt to the uh, time bearing environment. The next one. Uh, will will uh, multiple configuration grant existence of multiple 5G that is broadband service uh, and ultra reliable low latency communication mm, uh, address the coexistence uh, I think so it will address the coexistence but basically in 3GPP they propose multiple configuration grant with the main objective of uh, um, ultra reliable low latency applications to reduce the latency further. So this multiple configuration grant was introduced, uh, but uh, I am sure uh, they will uh, uh, operable under coexistence scenario. The another one, uh, uh, more suitable. And, and professor, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the uh, normal is one of the most promising radio access uh, uh, techniques in the next generation uh, wireless communication. So according to you, uh, what kind of uh, normal schemes uh, like uh, are more suitable for uh, uh, massive URLC applications like for uh, uh, power domain normals or something like that? Uh, yeah, so here in our simulation, we consider power domain, but so here there are numerous challenges available because the successful interference cancellation implementation is very challenging. So the, uh, the, uh, the error propagation and everything will have significant effect. So all these effects we haven't considered, but in real implementation, so this successful interference cancellation would be very challenging, uh, but we haven't considered other variants of nano orthogonal multiple access scheme in the code domain or anything we haven't considered, but we considered power domain. I agree the implementation challenges are numerous challenges available. Okay, how about uh, uh, this was a question from uh, Mohit like what type of uh, ARC scheme, HARQ schemes are more suitable yeah. for these type of applications? Uh, um, it's there are many, uh, yeah, there are many uh, ARQ schemes are available. There are numerous. So here we consider the simple schemes, uh, but there are uh, HARQ itself is a big topic. So we haven't considered different, different types of um, uh, the hybrid ARQ schemes in the performance. We haven't considered, we just considered the simple scheme. Okay, and thanks for the answer. And uh, one more question, like uh, uh, why the uh, pilot sequence uh, cannot be fixed uh, for uh, fix, uh, across the devices in the uh, URL LC scenarios? Uh, uh, what sequences? Uh, pilot. Like pilot sequence, uh, which has been sent to uh, the all the access points or the uh, base stations. The preamble. Preamble, yeah. Yeah, so uh, no. Normally, there exists a fixed number of preambles. Normally, I think 54. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the number of preambles are limited because so for user equipment identification, uh, we use the preambles. So, um, based on the preambles, we can uh, identify the user equipment. 
Okay. Yeah. And uh, are there any uh, standardizations or prototypes and test beds which is available for uh, URLC systems? The existing ones? Uh, okay. I think there are a few European projects. They have the uh, prototype uh, implemented and developed, but um, I am not uh, uh, aware that the what type of uh, schemes they use to develop the prototype. I am not aware, but there are few prototypes available in the EU projects. Okay, that's cool. that's okay. Yeah, and last final question, like uh, uh, since you mentioned about the machine learning techniques uh, have any to apply to uh, the URL CC systems. So how yeah. the uh, deep learning methods can be used for ensuring the diverse KPIs requirement, like uh, uh, high spectrum efficiency, throughput, energy efficiency, or network availability. So these are all like very challenging ones. So how it yeah, can yeah, be yeah. Uh, applied yeah. to that? Yeah, because uh, one industry project. So I was involved as a co-investigator. So the industry requirement is uh, uh, around 30, 40 parameters. So here just we considered only three parameters. So when we have uh, 30, 40 parameters, so the, the highly efficient or sophisticated machine learning algorithms should be utilized. But um, so I was not aware how they sold that 30, many parameters, 30, 40 parameters requirement of the industry. Uh, but there are um, ongoing research work for with a uh, high number of uh, agents. So, but okay. here we considered three agents so earlier we considered maximum in narrow band iot we considered nine agents then mm -hmm. uh, access control we, so we considered up to uh, 13 agents we considered our our research works so far we considered maximum 13 agents but some industries in real situation there are 30 40 parameters okay fine Okay, I think uh, we, uh, you have answered a lot of uh, questions and queries from the participants as well as from my side. So we'll try to wind up the uh, uh, talk and uh, like your presentation was very clear and very informative to everyone, I guess, because I can see from the chat uh, that uh, everyone is appreciative for your presentation. The topic was of also uh, relevant and important to our uh, research community. And I hope everyone uh, has gained from this talk, especially a new direction uh, for using uh, ML approaches in uh, the massive URLLC systems. So on the on behalf of uh, uh, TII, I take this opportunity to uh, thank Professor Arnugam Nalanathan for accepting our invitation and uh, delivering an enlightening talk for the uh, AADRC Telecom Seminar. Thank you, Professor. And okay, also, uh, would like, also would like to thank all the researchers uh, for attending the seminar and posting their questions and hope to catch up uh, for the uh, next informative talk. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you.